Hi everybody, this is Kulkit Chabla. In this video, we'll be discussing the next question of the code forces round 640, which is a binary string reconstruction. So let's start by reading out the problem. The problem says that for some uh, binary string S, uh, that is each character can be 0 or 1, all pairs of consecutive characters are written. Uh, in other words, all substrings of length 2 were written. For each pair, uh, substring of length 2, the number of ones in which in which were uh, in it were calculated. You are given three numbers and not the number of such pairs of consecutive numbers with the number of ones were zero. It means that it is talking about the substrings of type zero zero, right? Uh, in in which both of them are zero, and one in which the number of ones in the consecutive characters were one. So it is talking about one zero and zero one. So the substrings that it's talking about is either 1 0 or 0 1 and in the last one it says that the number of such pairs with the number of ones were 2 so it means the substrings were of type 1 1 right okay so for example the following substrings are written and 2 equals to 5 because the substrings of type 1 1 are 5 1 2 3 4 and 5 and n1 is 3 because 1 0 or 0 1 uh, if we add both of their frequencies it will be 3 uh, 1 2 and 3 right for n0 we want 0 0 it's just 1 so n0 equals to 1 our task is to restore any such uh, any suitable binary string s from the given values n0 n1 and n2 it is guaranteed that at least one of the numbers uh, n0 n1 and n2 is greater than 0 also it is guaranteed that a solution exists okay so uh, in the input we'll be having several test cases the number of test cases can be up to 1000 and in each test case we'll be given three numbers that is n0 n1 and n2 and it is guaranteed that uh, this the answer for given n1 n2 uh, n0 n1 n2 exists okay for each test case we'll be printing just one, one line that will uh, represent the binary string that is uh, for that for which the values of n1 n0 n1 and 2 will match the values that are given in the input right okay so uh, we'll be jumping on to the solution now uh, if you want to give it a try for yourself it will be a good time to pause the video and uh, think okay so n0 right n0 means that both of them should be zero just uh, notice let's say the values of n n1 and n2 were zero for example and we had just n naught equal to something then what we could have done is we could have just simply let's say value of n naught is uh, five we could have just simply printed six zeros so then when printing six zeros we know that the number of uh, pairs with uh, two zeros uh, consecutive zeros will be going will be going to be five one two three four five right similarly if we had the value of n2 as something for example maybe three and the other two values are zero we could have simply printed 4 times 1 right in this case we know that the number of pairs with two ones will be 3 right but uh, something to think of more is when the other two values are also non-zero now in this case if uh, if it is the case that uh, like if it is the case in which uh, it is not the case that n, n0 is 0 n0 is non-zero and other two are 0 or n2 is non-zero and the other two are 0 will have you know zeros also and ones also in the string it is it is not going to be the case that the string just consists of zeros or just consists of one the case when uh, something like this could have happened was only when if n2 is non-zero and the other two are zero or n0 is non-zero and other two are zero right okay so moving on to the other case now what uh, we know that the string will be having zeros uh, as well as ones as well as ones right okay now in this in this case what i recommend is what we can do is let's basically look at what is the value of n1 in n1 we know that the string should either be type of uh, should, should either be of the type 0 1 or 1 0 right let's say the value of n1 is say for example uh, maybe 5 what we could have done is we could have simply said 1 0 1 0 1 zero in this case we know the, i have just actually printed ones and zeros alternatively or we could have also done maybe zero one zero one zero one alternatively zeros and ones 
and the number of numbers that I have printed is six because in this case we'll be have we'll be having five pairs uh, that will have exactly one one. It is also exactly five pairs one two three four five. Okay. Now once we have gotten uh, uh, you know some pairs, uh, the the value of n one has been satisfied. Now what we can do is for satisfying the value of n two, we can pick any of the ones. And we can append n2 ones to it. In this manner, we'll have n2 plus one consecutive ones, and we know that leads to n2 uh, pairs exactly. We just drew, uh, uh, you know, um, maybe a minute ago, right? And for satisfying the value of n0, what we can do is we can simply, uh, you know, uh, basically append n0 and not number of zeros to any zero, right? So if we do that, we'll, we would have satisfied the value of n0 as well and n1, n1 as well and uh, uh, n2 as well, right? I hope uh, the basic idea behind the solution is clear. So maybe I'll just jump to the code and see how I had implemented it. Okay. <coughs> okay, so I have took the input of n0, n1 and n2. Uh, in this case, I say that if n2 value is something non-zero and n1 and n2 are non-zero, oh, sorry, the n2 value is non-zero and n1 and n0 are zeros, it means that the string is going to consist of all ones. So what I did is I just printed n2 one, n2 plus one times one, and then uh, enter key, then continue, right? Just uh, just like we discussed. Okay, and now in the other case, uh, when the value of uh, the n1 and n2 and not n1 and n2 is not like this what i'll be doing is i'll, I'll be just printing n0 plus one zeros initially because i know uh, we just discussed that we'll have n0 plus one zeros then we'll have alternatively zero one zero one zero and so on and uh, out of any of the ones that uh, we may choose we can append you know out of in any of the ones we can append n2 ones to it so that the condition of the n2s is also satisfied okay now uh, what i'll be doing is i'll just print n0 plus 1 times 0 now i'll say if not n1 it means that uh, there is no uh, such basically uh, pair with which has which is of the type 0 1 or 1 0 so it means that uh, okay there is something there is some thought that we'll have to give here See, if the value of n0 is 0, it basically means that the value of n2 will also have to be 0 for answer to exist. n1 basically says that there is no uh, pair of type 0, 1 or 1, 0. It means that there is no 1 actually present in the array. If uh, in this string, if there was at least 1 n, uh, you know, 1, 0 and 1, 1 present, then there must have been some pair with, where we would have gotten 0, 1 or 1, 0. Because if it's not all zero or all one, for sure there will be uh, some case where you know we have at least uh, uh, such case you know uh, when we have zero one and one zero. Because uh, take any case where there are zeros as well as ones, we'll have at least one pair where the pair is zero one or one zero. So if and not n one, it means that uh, there is no such. Uh, there, there is not going to be any such case where we have two ones, right? Uh, so n2 is also going to be have two zero in that case. So I just print uh, enter and continue. So uh, if it's not, then what I'll be doing is I'll be printing n2 plus one times one because uh, we just discussed that I'll have to append, you know, uh, n2 times one to any of the ones. To, so what I did is uh, after having printed n1 plus one zeros, I printed n2 plus 1 ones, n2 plus 1 ones. So initially we have n0 plus 1 zeros and then I have n2 plus 1 ones, right? Now we can see uh, while printing these, we have made one pair such that, you know, uh, the number of ones is 1, 0, 1 right now i'll just say n1 minus minus because one such pair has already been uh, gotten 
now after this what i'll be doing is uh, i know that the last number that i had is one now i'll be just simply doing zero one zero one uh n2 uh, sorry n1 number of times after subtracting one from it because one pair we have already got so i just say current equals to zero because the first number that i need to print now is zero so i'll just say uh, print current uh, that basically this process will be done n1 number of times after having subtracted one of course and uh, then I'll say that uh, just swap current. This is something that will um, swap the value of current. It will make it uh, one if the current value is zero. It will make it zero if the current value is one. So in the alternating manner, I'll just keep, keep printing them. And after having printed, I'll just say backslash and see your backslash. All right. So in this manner, we can uh, satisfy all the constraints that are given. And uh, yeah, this is it. I hope uh, the code is clear. I hope the implementation part is clear. If something uh, doesn't fit well according to you, you may comment down below. I'll try and help you. So this is it for this video guys. See you guys in the next one. Thank you.